What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are talking about summertime baits and what hooks I like to throw. Doesn't matter if you're throwing a worm or a swim bait, today's video, I'm covering the hooks that I like to use on the different types of baits that put fish in the boat this summertime. Let's go. Summertime is a great time to get out on the water and catch fish. It doesn't matter if you're throwing a worm or a big swim bait or a crankbait or some kind of soft plastic, one of the most important things is your hook. That's what's going to penetrate that fish's mouth. That's what's going to make sure you get that good hook penetration. A nice sharp hook is very important, but if you have a dull hook or a cheap hook, when you finally get that bite and you go to stick that fish, it doesn't get good hook, hook penetration. That fish usually typically comes off halfway to the boat, halfway to the shore, and uh, it leads to heartbreak. So today's video, I'm going to go through a handful of different styles of techniques, different baits that I like to throw this time of the year. And then I'm going to tell you which hooks that I rig up and why, depending on how the fish are reacting to the bait, how they're eating it. Uh, it depends on which type of hook, which style of hook. And that's what today's video is all about. So let's start off with uh, let's start off with treble hooks because summertime the water's warm, the fish are active. You know they're they're chasing down crankbaits, they're chasing down topwaters, and there are so many different types and styles of treble hooks on the market. Today's video, hopefully, this will simplify it for you and keep it simple for you, so you know which hooks to rig onto your bait and why. So let's start off with crankbaits. Summertime, deep ledge fishing, cranking up shallow, throwing square bills. It is a fantastic time to throw a crankbait. And there are a ton of different crankbait hooks on the market, or I should say treble hooks. Now, those of you guys that have followed us in the past, you know that we typically throw owner ST36 hooks on most of our baits and uh, down below in the video description I will link all of these different hooks because there are model numbers and uh, I don't want you to have to take notes or anything so I'll link everything down below but an owner ST36 this guy right here now depending on if I'm throwing a small topwater or a big glide bait there's gonna be different sizes but the style is gonna be the same it's gonna be a round bend treble hook now it's very important to understand the different types of treble hooks. Another fantastic style of treble hook is going to be an EWG. This is actually a Gamakatsu EWG. Now the difference, real quick so you guys understand, a round bend hook, the hook is parallel to the hook shank. An EWG, the tips are pointed end. So you're going to have a larger hook gap in the, in the bottom, the round part of the hook and the point is going to be closer angled back towards the shank of the hook, so it's going to be a tighter uh, bend, if that makes sense. They're going to be tipped in, and I will give you some zoomed up bait, uh, shots of the baits, but uh, EWG and ST36's, a round bend style hook, is typically what I throw. I typically start out with an ST36, that round bend style, because that is what is great on reaction baits. When those fish are coming up, and they're just slashing at a bait or they're not completely engulfing it, having those hook tip points bent out a little bit, ooh, it's getting windy, a little bit makes, it gives you a better ratio of getting that hook point through that fish's mouth. Now, if you are throwing a bait and they are just choking it, they're eating it a lot better, they're not slashing at it and swiping at it, that is when we'll go with the EWG style hook, the tipped end point, because when you jack them with that, now you have that extra added angle to that hook it makes it harder for that fish to come off with come off so crankbaits I typically start out with an with a st36 the owner st36 that's a 1x hook what that means is that is a, a traditional just a 1x diameter uh, hook 2x 3x that means it's gonna be a more of a stout hook thicker wire heavier wire but a 1x the st36 is a 1x hook and it is a great round bin so doesn't matter if I'm throwing them on glide baits or crank baits, that's typically what I start out with. Now again, cranking, doesn't matter if you're deep cranking or shallow cranking, this is a great hook 
to throw. Very durable, very sharp. You know, a lot of baits today come with, with inexpensive or cheap hooks. So that's why we tell you to typically upgrade most of the hooks on your bait. And that's why this, this video is somewhat important because most baits you want to change out the hooks. You know, it kind of sucks when you, when you spend, you know, five, 10, 15, $20 on a bait and you gotta go, gotta go upgrade the hooks, but it, it's kind of reality, guys. It's the way it is. Some bait companies, some manufacturers actually come with owner or gamakatsu or VMC hooks on their must adds, some nicer hooks than the stock stuff, but for the most part, you're gonna have to upgrade these hooks. So getting back to cranking, if I'm throwing a square bill and the fish are, are slashing at it and stuff, that's where I'm gonna go with an ST36. Again, that round bin. Now, if they are really eating it and I'm hopping, let's say I'm hopping a lipless crankbait, EWG, I'm hopping it on bottom, I'm fishing it through grass, having those hook tips pointed in helps it come through the vegetation better. You don't get hung up as easy. But again, when you do hook those fish, they stay pinned. So that is typically what I throw. An owner ST36 on my crankbaits, if they're really eating the bait, then I will go to an EWG. And again, I will link those down below in the video description. Sizes depend on the actual bait you're throwing. Obviously, if you're throwing a six or an eight inch glide bait, that's gonna be a different size hook than you would on a little uh, crankbait or topwater. So hopefully that makes sense as far as EWG and round bins. Now, one other hook that I do wanna throw in the mix, I've talked to you guys about it before, is the owner cranking hook. And I will, again, I'll link the actual model down below in the video description. But what this hook does, it has a 150 degree angle between the back two hooks. So it lays more flat to the bait. So as this bait is coming through rock, coming through cover, this hook hides back behind that belly, but it protrudes out the side. So you have a wider angle and I really like throwing this, this hook if I want to throw a specialty hook on my crankbaits. Again, I will link that down below. One tip, there is a correct way to put on treble hooks on your baits. Make sure that on your front hook, you have the two out to the side. And again, I'll show you a close up of this. But that leaves one hook perfectly vertical, perfectly parallel in line with the bait. And then on the back, you want your two bottom hooks pointing or out to the side and you want your one hook vertically to the top. That allows a real good hookup ratio when that fish comes behind and just gets that back hook, you get that top hook right through the upper lip. So that is crankbaits and this also applies to topwater. Right now is a great time to throw a popper, throw a walking bait. So again, a bait like this, I'm gonna start off throwing with an ST36, that round bin style. On this guy, you can see I actually put a feathered treble on here. I don't have it out here, but I'll link those down below. I like to throw a feathered treble on the rear of my top waters. It's just preference, guys. Some guys like it, some guys don't. But when you're walking your bait and you pause it, let it sit there, that feather back there is just dancing enough that gets, keeps those fish interested. And a lot of times you'll get bit when that bait is just sitting there. So again, start with that, ooh, sticky. Start with that round bin style hook. And I typically don't ever go with the EWG style hook on my top waters. I do on my crankbaits, not on the top waters. Sorry guys about the wind. I didn't, you gotta love these summer storms rolling in. So hopefully you guys understand the round bin versus the EWG. Now I do want to talk about heavy wire hooks. When I am, when I am throwing big swim baits or I'm throwing lipless crank baits for big bass, sometimes, a lot of times, depending on the fishery, if I'm fishing Clear Lake or some other big bass factory, I will throw an ST. 56 that 3x that 3x wire hook it's a heavier gauge wire and you're gonna have less chances of hooks bending out the last thing you want is you're playing that pb to the boat or to the shore to the kayak whatever it may be and that final jump next to the boat the fish comes off and you reel your bait back and you have a hook point bent out so that is when i will go with the st56s uh, again, again, it's the same. It's a round bend. 
it's just a heavier wire hook. So just to refresh, top waters, I always throw the round bend. It's, if they're really eating the bait, you could get away with EWG, uh, but I typically, doesn't matter if it's a popper or a walking bait, I will go with a round bend style hook. Last reaction bait I wanna talk about before we talk about some soft plastics is gonna be a swim bait. Now there's a lot of baits you can throw during the summertime, a frog, a horny toad, that sort of stuff, but uh, most of those baits come pre-rigged. Obviously a frog comes pre-rigged. Horny toad, we can talk about that in, a, in its own separate video. So let's talk swim baits. Now there's a lot of different hooks on the market, obviously. There's a lot of different baits on the market. Um, I want to give you kind of my four or five favorite hooks that you can apply to different swim baits. Uh, let's start off by talking about the owner beast. If you guys haven't heard of an owner beast hook, you've probably been living under a rock because they've been around for a long time and they kind of were the first and set the standard for that big soft swim bait hook. Now what this is, this is a hook that has a twist lock on the top. You thread that onto the face of your swim bait. And again, you want this, you want this bait hanging parallel to the hook shank and you're gonna rig this up through the belly of the bait. Now the Owner Beast comes in a ton of different sizes, but this is actually a 10 aught. The 10 aught works great for a lot of your six inch soft plastic swim baits. This is actually the Scottsboro Tackle, uh, but the benefit of this bait right here, or this hook right here, is it is weedless. Very easy to fish through structure, very easy to fish through uh, grass and cover, that sort of stuff. But if you guys haven't already, go look at the Owner Beast hooks. They come in a lot of different sizes, a lot of different weights, but this right here is a must, especially if you want to throw these larger, soft paddle tail swim baits. Now for you guys that like an exposed hook, obviously we're gonna recommend the hook that Matt and I uh, both designed. That's <clears throat> the tactical finesse head. This is a awesome swim bait head. It's made by Dirty Jigs Tackle. If you guys don't know, they make some of the nicest stuff, nicest jigs on the market. So we paired up with those guys and uh, came out with the tactical finesse head. Most of you guys have seen the Matt Allen swim bait head. This has been a top seller, a best seller, sold out all across the country for a, a long time. Matt and Matt Allen, and Kurt from Dirty Jigs uh, built this built this head several years ago and it has been money. The difference between the two, we like to throw the heavier wire hook. Just like in the, the treble hooks, we like to throw that heavier wire hook, but it is not always needed, especially when you're in clear water. You wanna downsize the actual swim bait you're throwing. You're going for smallmouth or spotted bass in pressured fisheries clear water, the fish are line shot. You know, we've kind of talked about, the last couple weeks we've talked about knots, we've talked about different types of line, now we're talking about different types of hooks. And now you know why there's so many different styles because it all changes depending on the situation you're in. So we got the Matt Allen swim bait head. That is your everyday chuck and wind swim bait head. It's got a heavier wire hook. If you're fishing big bass fisheries, this is the swim bait head you want, especially if you want an exposed hook. If you're fishing lighter line, pressured fish, clear water, and you just don't want to have to throw a, a heavier stout or heavier action rod, check out the Tackle Bass and Finesse Head by Dirty Jigs. These two are money. The last two I want to talk about before we move into soft plastics, weightless Senkos, drop shots, Texas rigs, is going to be a little finesse head little guppy head. Again, this is also a swim bait head by Dirty Jigs Tackle. That is the guppy head. That is money on a spinning rod, a light bait caster, but that is my favorite little swim bait head for your 2.8, 3.3 sized soft plastic swim baits. And the last but not least is gonna be the flashy swimmer. If you guys want something a little different you want something to add a little flash, you want something to be a little bit more weedless, check out the Owner Flashy Swimmer. We have done tons of videos on this, this uh, hook in the past, but this is a must have. 
Now, the reason I'm kind of talking about this right now is because summertime, you're fishing through vegetation, you're fishing reaction baits, you're typically fishing a little bit faster. But as we know with COVID and stuff, there's been a little bit of shortage on a lot of fishing tackle. You know, as soon as stuff got it started getting delayed from overseas, you know, stuff started getting back ordered and, and things have been harder to get. So these are the main staples in my, my, my summertime fishing. So get the stuff while you can. I don't know if the stuff's gonna be available the rest of the year or what's gonna happen with this whole COVID situation. But uh, if, it, if it seems like we're talking about baits and hooks that we normally talk about, that is why. We're gonna, we wanna make sure you guys get the stuff you need. That way you can fish all the way through fall and into winter without having to wait on back orders. All right, for those of you guys that like to flip, like to throw weightless baits, get up shallow, flip cover, throw on grass mats, I have some hooks for you as well. Now you beginner fishermen, pond fishermen, shore fishermen, if you guys like throwing weightless Senkos, I got three or four hooks that you guys are gonna wanna check out depending on your fishery and how you like to fish them. Now again, these are all hooks that I use, it's my opinion only. There's a lot of great hook brands and everything on the market. I'm just talking about what I typically use and what Matt typically uses. Some things we, we, uh, we agree on, some things we're a little bit different on, but uh, these I have confidence in. So let's talk about Senko fishing. Now, first off, you gotta figure out, are you gonna be rigging your, your Senko wacky or are you gonna be Texas rigging it weedless? So if you're gonna wacky rig, I have two phenomenal hooks for you. One by Gamakatsu and one by Owner. This is actually the Sniper Finesse by Owner. Comes with a titanium weed guard. And then the G Finesse from Gamakatsu, a little bit longer shank. It's a Nico rig hook. Both are great hooks. Uh, wacky rigging is a great way to put fish to the boat this time of the year. So if you are fishing wacky, check out those two style of hooks. Now typically on a five inch Senko, I'm gonna go, you can get away with a two-aught, but I'll, I'll typically go with a three-aught. And depending on where you're fishing or bigger fish, you can go with actually a jungle hook. Owner has that same hook in a jungle version, which is like the, uh, the 3X hook that we talked about in the treble hook, just a little heavier wire, more stout of a hook. Now if you're Texas rigging, Texas rig we talked about a few weeks ago, this is gonna be a better setup if you are fishing through grass you know the summertime as that water heats up and that grass comes up to the surface texas rigging is kind of where i will start going most of the year I, I i wacky rig i fish those two hooks i just talked about but this time of the year fishing around grass fishing weedless i start going texas rig and that's where i go with a five aught worm hook now again this is this is actually a gamakatsu but owner makes good ones, VMC, must add, all of your top hook companies make good worm hooks, but a, just remember a five aught for a five inch. Now staying on that same deal, six aught for a six inch, and then the seven aught for the seven inch. Now this is actually a new hook by owner. This is actually their jungle hook. So this is a seven inch Senko, a lot heavier lot bigger presentation than your five inch Senko. I really like flipping this either on straight braid or heavy fluorocarbon and that's why I go with that seven aught jungle worm hook and again I will link that stuff down below in the video description. The benefit of this it's weedless it's a big presentation and gets bites and when you jack those fish in that grass mat or next to that pad or that lay down that jungle hook is not going to fold out and you can really you can really hit those fish hard and get them out of the cover. But that is a seven aught for a seven inch, six aught for a six inch, and a five aught for a five inch. Again, I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you guys. I'll link everything down below in the video description, but I wanna make sure you guys have all of your stuff covered so you can fish right now through fall into winter and have all of your terminal tackle so you don't have to worry about back orders. The last technique that I wanna talk about that is a great technique you guys have seen it in the tournaments right now. A lot of guys are fishing deep, drop shotting and catching a lot of fish, a lot of big fish, pressured situations. You slow down, you throw that more finesse technique, you get big bites. But there are so many drop shot hooks on the market, I wanted to simplify it for you. Now I throw, <laughs> simplify for you, I have three different ones for you if that's simple enough. 
Um, again, not brand specific. Uh, I believe Matt's number one favorite drop shot hook is gonna be this Trocar right here. Trocar drop, drop shot hook. I'll link it down below in the video description. In all of these hooks, I typically throw a one or a one aught. Sometimes a two aught if I'm throwing a big bait, but typically a one or a one aught. So the Trocar is a must have. Another great one is that G Finesse by Gamakatsu. Uh, the Aaron Martin's drop shot hook is a spectacular hook. It has that nano coating on it. Very sticky, very slick, uh, very good finesse light wire hook. And then the other one that we always use is gonna be that Mosquito Light hook by Owner. It comes in the Mosquito and the Mosquito Light. Again, talk about that diameter of, of metal, that uh, the actual how thick the metal is on that hook. So it's a lighter wire hook, more of your finesse techniques. When you're fishing clear water, small mouth, pressured fish, again, clear water, that's when I'll go with that Mosquito Light or that uh, Gamakatsu. One last technique, I almost forgot it, I got it sitting right here, uh, is flipping and punching. How do you talk about summertime fishing without going and fishing that heavy cover? You know, you have your guys that are out on the ledges cranking, you have your guys out on the ledges throwing drop shots, you have your guys up shallow flipping weightless baits, Texas rig baits, and then you have those guys that are punching heavy baits, one ounce, ounce and a half, ounce three quarter, two ounce, tungsten and weights, down through the vegetation, down through the cover, and punching that bait through and sticking fish. So a punching bait or a heavy Texas rig, I typically go with that jungle flipping hook or the trocar. Both of these hooks are very good, very strong. You could run 65, 80 pound test braid and not bend these hooks out. This jungle, ha jungle hook has that, that nano coating on it as well. Very strong hook. The main differences between these two hooks is going to be the hook keeper. The Trocar has a big plastic uh, kind of a barb on it, whereas the, the owner has a, a, a nylon or a fishing line kind of a keeper. It doesn't rip up your bait as much, but if you're throwing a bigger bait, the Trocar is great as well. So that covers it. Flipping, weightless Senkos, drop shot, wacky rigged, crankbaits, topwater, swim baits. Um, hopefully that simplified it for you guys. I know it's a lot of different things, but again, I wanted you guys to understand it, understand the stuff that I use this time of the year, all the way through winter time. This stuff, if you, if you load up on your hooks right now, you won't have to be waiting for that package to be on back order because who knows what the supply and demand is going to be with uh, everything moving forward with all this COVID stuff. But, uh, there it is guys go out summertime fish reaction fish finesse fish, flip, punch, swim bait fish, however you want to catch them, these hooks will keep those fish pegged and get them in the boat. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. We'll try to get to those as soon as possible. As always, guys, we appreciate you guys. Have a good one.